Yeah. Cool. Question? Okay, so last time we were talking about simple harmonic motion, where just as an example, we had a mass on a spring, so the mass just moves. Uh, well, in that example, we had it moving back and forth. And we wanted to be able to describe, like, the motion of this, uh, this object. And this is connected to a spring. And so, you know, spring force depends on the extension of the spring. And so the acceleration is definitely not constant in this example. So we had to come up with a different way of doing it. We use that auxiliary circle approach, which, uh, you know, kind of gave us this result. But now uh, I want to do a separate video where say we have a problem and uh, we're just going to solve it using what we already know. So like when, when you're uh, doing problems, you don't have to worry about that auxiliary approach. Um, maybe a good thing to have in mind, but uh, you know, let's do an example where say we have a mass hanging from a spring, and, you know, 200 gram mass, made the force constant of the spring 1.2 newtons per centimeter, and A is the amplitude, so let's say we pull this down nine centimeters and release it. Now, you might be wondering, uh, this spring is vertical, where the other one was horizontal, here, let's just say that x equals zero here at this level. Uh, this is where the spring would just naturally rest with this mass hanging on. So if you remove the mass, the whole the spring would you know compress a bit and its equilibrium position would be a bit higher. But this mass, so like the system is at rest right here. And now, uh, if we pull this, it's going to go undergo circular or uniform circular motion. Uh, sorry, simple harmonic motion, uh, centered at this new equilibrium position. Now, uh, gravity does play a role here. Uh, so, again, it's not necessarily trivial that it does that, but I don't want to actually go into that. It's in the notes if you want to read it. Like, you can start out with the mass, where you have gravity downwards and a force constant upwards. And you can show that this goes through uh, simple harmonic motion. The only role gravity plays is pulling the whole thing down to a new, new equilibrium position. So what we want to do, uh, most importantly, the first thing you want to do when you come across a problem like this is find the angular frequency. And uh, from that we can find uh, everything else. Uh, we can find the period. Um, I also want to know what is the maximum velocity of this object? And we can add maximum acceleration as well. Why not? I can do one more thing. Uh, so it's going to start here, and then it's going to... We pull it down to x equals a. So we'll say, like, down is our positive direction, just to match up with what we have here. And I want to know, how long is it going to take to get back to equilibrium? Let's call that t... E. So like once we release it from its ample maximum amplitude, how long is it going to take to cross x equals zero again? So let's do all this. And we're going to start out, you generally want to start out with the angular frequency. And again, for a mass on a spring, we have that um, here, let's do k is 1.2 newtons per centimeter and then divide by the mass which is 200 grams so actually we are going to have to do some conversions here so first off uh, let's say 100 centimeters is one meter a um, thousand grams I go do this right
Yeah. Okay, so K newtons per centimeters. And then we have grams on the bottom. Yeah, it looks good. And then a newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So first, let's check the units. Newtons, centimeters, grams, kilograms, and meters. On the bottom, we have centimeters, grams, meters, kilograms, newtons, and second squared. And so this will give us radians per second. All right, well, we have, uh, when we take the square root, we'll just get radians per second. Okay, so let's erase that. Now that we know our units. Um, I think this is going to be a pretty large number. So 100 divided by 200, that's one half. So we have 0.6 times 1,000. So this is 600 per second squared. Yeah, I'm not sure I picked good numbers for this problem. It's a pretty strong spring for this mass, I think. But uh, take the square root of 600. So 24.5. Put a box around that. Okay, so uh, that's going to be going, you know, pretty quickly. So we did this. Okay, right. now next up, let's find the period. Now, oh, something I didn't write down on here, it's kind of, we could put some of these things together. But if we were to plot this, um, let me just draw a plot here. If we plot the amplitude as a function of time, it's a cosine curve. And it repeats itself, you know, after one cycle, that's the definition of a period. And this would be 2 pi radians. Like one cycle is 2 pi radians. So omega times a period is equal to 2 pi. I'll just throw that on there. It's kind of already, if you combine these other things, uh, you can get that result as well. But the period is 2 pi over omega. So let's see, uh, 2 pi, that's around 6.28 over 24.5 per second. Um, let's do that. So about 0.26 seconds. Put a box around it. So, mention this thing is, I made the force constant a little too strong for this mass. Uh, it, this thing's going to be moving, it'll complete a cycle. So, it starts down here. So, it's going to go up and back down about four times every second. Actually, a second's a fairly long uh, time interval if you're just like watching this. So it's moving pretty quick, but maybe not too unreasonable. Okay. Now the next question, uh, the maximum velocity of this particle, there's different ways we can go about solving this. And I'll talk about the easiest way first. Uh, the velocity as a function of time. Actually here, let's... Uh, Say we plot everything as a function of omega t. So here we have velocity is minus a omega sine omega t. It's described by a sine function. So we release it from rest. And then uh, it's going to look like this. And of course it's Periodic. It just keeps repeating itself over and over. Now, 
the different ways that we could go about solving this. There's a couple ways. Uh, one is we could think, where is the maximum velocity going to occur? So we release it from here, and the spring is at maximum extension. It's accelerating upwards, and it's going to continue accelerating upwards until it reaches x equals 0. So one way we could do this is solve for that time. Like, we can plug x equals 0 in this equation and uh, solve for time. And then once we have time, we can plug it into this equation and get velocity. That would be one approach. Uh, that's not the one we're going to do because, uh, or maybe we should, just because that's uh, kind of a more difficult way to do it. Yeah, let's do it that way. I'll show you the easy way in a little bit. But let's just say we recognize that the maximum velocity is going to occur at x equals 0. So we plug that in. So we have 0 equals a cosine omega t, or cosine omega t equals 0. We can divide by a. 0 divided by a is still 0. So we can solve for this time. So I mean omega t would be pi over 2. So if you have your you know, unit circle, the x-coordinate of that point is cosine. So if we want cosine to be 0, this is the first time it's going to occur. So this would be pi over 2. And it's going to happen again over here. And that's, you know, it starts out here. So we have maximum velocity here. And that's going to slow down until its velocity reaches zero. And then it's going to accelerate downwards. And it'll reach maximum velocity going the other direction uh, at 3 pi over 2. But we don't care about that one. We just want this answer here. And uh, actually, that was kind of another question. I say we're at the bottom. How long is it going to take to get up there? So we can do this. Uh, Te is pi over 2 divided by omega. It's around 1.57 over 24.5 radians per second. So let's see what we get here. So this was about 0 0.064 seconds. Now, I made this problem, this, you know, I ended this question because I intended to do something different with it, but we'll come back to that later. So we found this time, and um, now we can plug it in the velocity equation. We don't care about the A, or the negative sign, but the amplitude, we're going to leave it as centimeters. Um, and then we have omega, 24.5. And then we have sine omega times Te for equilibrium. And so let's do that last part first. Let's take this time and multiply it by omega. You might notice something interesting happened here. Um... Getting 1.57. There's a bit of rounding off here. And then uh, I'm going to take the sine of that. And what I'm getting is 0 0.999 999682. Uh, basically, what we should be getting here is 1. Uh, just because I had a little bit of a round off error. But it rounds off to 1 basically. And that's why this was kind of unnecessary. If you look at the plot, the maximum velocity, um, if you look at like sine omega t, if we just look, or like say sine of x, if we just plot that, if the value bounces around between 1 and negative 1, just over and over, it's never more than 1 or less than negative 1. And so... There will be times when this equals 1. Uh, let's forget the minus sign. We don't care. So 1 or negative 1 doesn't matter. 
We're just looking at how fast it's going. There will be times when it's one. So we can say that uh, there will be a time when the velocity is just equal to a omega. That occurs when sine is one. And it's never going to be more than that. Because sine just doesn't go above one or less than negative one. And so in general, we can say, we can even write this down. Um, I'll just write it here. That the maximum velocity is a omega. So in general. So in general, velocity is a omega times something that has a maximum value of 1. So the maximum speed is going to be a omega. So we'll do it the kind of simple way now. So 9 centimeters times 24.5 radians per second. Let's convert that to meters. So I'm getting 2.21 meters per second. That is the maximum velocity of this object. And that occurs when it passes x equals 0. Now, similarly, we can do the same thing for a max. All right, we figured that out. Uh, a max cosine also bounces around between 1 and negative 1. So in general, the maximum acceleration is going to be a omega squared. So let's find the maximum acceleration. We're going to convert the amplitude to meters, and then we have 24.5 per second squared. So what I'm getting is a maximum acceleration of 54 meters per second squared. All right, now one more thing. Um, yeah, the last question is find the time it takes to go from maximum amplitude back to x equals zero. We already did that by just plugging x equals zero into this equation, but there's another way we can do this. And we can, just looking at, uh, say, the position as a function of time, here's our uh, cosine curve. So we start here. And then x equals 0 is here. Uh, that's one quarter of a complete cycle. Uh, it's maybe more clearly seen with the unit circle. If we picture this point moving around with an angular velocity of omega, then you know, theta is omega t. We're just going at a constant speed around this circle. And because it's a circle, like each quadrant is going to take the same amount of time. So you go from 0 to maximum amplitude, maximum amplitude to 0, or then 0 to minus a, uh, minus a to 0. Each of those is one quarter of the cycle. So te, the, that would just be the period over 4. Uh, let's calculate that and compare to what we did the other way. We do 0.26 divided by 4, that's 0 0.065. So a little bit of rounding off, rounding error here, but uh, yeah. so we basically get the same answer. Now, uh, there's one more thing I want to do with this problem. Uh, it's kind of a nice little trick, which maybe will come in handy, maybe not. But uh, I'm going to start, uh, let's say we have a triangle, sides x, y, and r, and then let's say that this angle is theta. Now we can say that uh, sine of theta is y over r 
cosine theta is x over r, just from definition. And we know these sides are related by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, if we divide everything by r squared, so divide both sides, we get x squared, well, here, I'll just, that equals 1. And we can write this as x over r in parentheses squared plus y over r squared equals 1. And x over r is cosine theta, y over r is sine of theta. So basically what we have is just a different way of writing the Pythagoras theorem. Let's write the result down here. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now if we look at uh, our relations for x and v, cosine of, or let's start with sine and again, you can, theta can be anything. So we can say sine squared omega t plus cosine squared omega t equals 1. So sine omega t, that would be v over a omega. Uh, notice I didn't put the minus sign in because I know we're going to square it. And then uh, cosine omega t is x over a. And so the Pythagoras theorem, you know, this uh, this form of it, we can get rid of sine at these sine. We can get rid of the time dependence entirely, and just get a relation between x and v. So a is a constant. Uh, let's multiply both sides by by a squared. Okay, that should have been squared. So if we multiply by a squared, we have v over omega squared plus x squared equals a squared. And so again, we have a relation that between the position and velocity that just doesn't have any time dependence. So that'd be another way. If you want to know, like, what is the velocity at a given position, x? Like, let's say x equals 0. So that would give us our maximum velocity. We can just uh, plug in x equals 0 here and get v squared. There, let's write that down. At x equals 0, we have v squared over omega squared equals a squared, or v equals a omega. So another way to get that result, that this is our maximum velocity. That's equal to a omega. But again, this would be useful, like say that we wanted to know, how about what is the velocity when x equals 4 centimeters? So um, now one way to do that, we could plug in x equals 4, solve for time, and then plug it in here. But uh, using this little trick, we can just plug x equals 4 centimeters. Let's do this. V squared, or let's do V over omega squared. That would be A squared minus X squared. So A is 9, so uh, we have 81 minus 16. So it's at 65 um, centimeters squared. And then we can easily solve for the velocity. So let's take the square root. So we have 65 centimeters over omega. I erased omega. I think it was 24.5. So let's do this. So I'm getting is around 15.9 meters per second. So if you ever want a, just a direct relation between position and velocity uh, without having to solve for time, uh, that's a nice little trick.
But I uh, think uh, this is kind of the thing you can expect from problems. So notice we didn't actually draw this auxiliary circle or talk about, you know, looking at the components of these vectors in the x direction. We don't do that stuff. We do it once to kind of show us how to solve this kind of problem. And then we can use this, basically everything over here. We can just use that now. Uh, so mainly we get this result and everything kind of follows from that. And next, again, it seems like we went through a lot of trouble just to talk about a mass on a spring. But again, very important in general in physics. In this class, we're only going to look at one more example of that, but that'll be a separate video. So that'll be it for this one.